All right, so in this module and the next, we're gonna look at some strengthening mechanisms for metals. So let's go over kind of the four strategies that we're gonna do, that we'll talk about for strengthening metals. So the first one is based on that, the fact that polycrystals are stronger and therefore smaller crystals and more and more crystals will make a material stronger. So we can talk about grain size reduction. We can also use what we call solid solution strengthening. So basically making an alloy, making a solution of a material. So adding things to a pure material that will also result in strengthening. And then in the next module, we're going to talk about precipitation strengthening or hardening which is um, actually part of chapter 11. Uh, so you can kind of find that here. And the last is what we're gonna, last uh, mechanism or strategy that we're gonna talk about is called cold working. And so that's, uh, rolling is one example of cold working. So let's look at the first strategy, grain size reductions. So we saw that these grain boundaries are barriers to slip. And the way you can kind of envision this is, let's say we have a grain um, and we have an edge dislocation, so this is extra half plane, and it's moving on this slip plane and in this slip direction. And so it's gonna move and the extra half plane is gonna keep moving to the right. Um, however, at this point, the grain ends and we start a new grain, grain B over here, and that's at a specific um, angle to grain A. And so a, a comparable plane and direction would be the blue dashed line as opposed to the green dashed line. So in order for that slip to keep moving, once it reaches the boundary, um, it has to uh, realign with the direction and plane in grain B. And so this causes a barrier. So you have to apply more force for that dislocation to go across the boundary into this new direction and plane. So th that's why these grain boundaries are barriers to slip or plastic deformation. So the barrier, what we call the barrier strength then, would increase with the increasing angle mismatch between these grain boundaries. So the higher the angle, the, the stronger it gets. And also, um, if uh, grain, if these barriers, uh, if these are barriers to slip, then the more we have, the better it would be. And so the more boundaries you get means the smaller the grain size is. So we can basically decrease the grain size, make the smaller grain size, and that will strengthen the material based on this mechanism. And so this is summed up uh, by what's known as the Hall-Petch equation. This is an empirical equation. Basically, it's, it's uh, derived from uh, observation. And what it says is it says the yield strength stress, remember the yield is talking about when plastic deformation occurs, so when slip occurs, is related to uh, a constant, uh, sigma naught, uh, plus uh, another constant, k uh, sub y, ky, uh, multiplied by the diameter raised to the minus one half. So let's take a look at this equation in a little bit more detail. So Hall-Petch equation, we have the yield strength, and then the sigma naught and the ky are constants of the material. So kind of fitting parameters if you want to think about it like that. And then the average grain diameter is lowercase d, and that's raised to the minus one half. So what that shows us then is that if we plot the yield strength uh, in the y-axis and then diameter, and actually diameter to the minus one-half, what we see is that if we plot d to the minus one-half, we actually see that uh, the grain size is obviously not linear in this case. And so the, uh, the grain size actually increases, it still increases, sorry, the grain size decreases to the right, as you can see up here, um, and because of this kind of relationship. So uh, over here on the left, you see that we have a relatively large grain uh, size, 
And then down here on the, uh, up here on the right, we have a much smaller grain size, and therefore the yield strength is higher. So again, grain boundaries are barriers to slip. We have more grain boundaries because we have smaller grain size, and that increases the stress needed to yield the material. So that's in a nutshell what um, grain size reduction can do to strengthen the material. So if you have your choice and you have your ability and you want a stronger material, we can decrease the grain size as a way to increase the strength. All right, so let's look at the second um, strategy, and that was to form a solid solution. So a solid solution causes distortion of the lattice, this causes strain. So for example, if we have a substitutional impurity, so uh, an atom goes to the same site, but it's actually smaller. So this gray atom um, is in the place of uh, another atom like those over here. So since it's smaller, we create a local tension in this area um, as the others kind of compensate for the much smaller atom, or so for the smaller atom. And what that does is it generates local stress, uh, tension. And what that does is that if we try to move uh, dislocation now, so if we have a dislocation here or here, um, this opposes the dislocation motion because we have a strain um, related to the atom. So basically, um, the impurity generates a local stress at A or B that opposes the dislocation motion in the, the normal direction of to, to the right here and to the left here. So that's for the smaller substitutional. We can have similar effects on large substitutional impurities. In this case, we have this large substitution, and that creates a compression and we have a th same idea, but in this case, the, the positions are different, but we have a uh, basically local stress at C and D, and that imposes opposes the motion of the dislocation uh, going to the right up on the top and to the left at the bottom. So these um, impurities distort the lattice, generate lattice strains, and these strains are barriers to that dislocation motion. So let's look at it a little bit more in detail here. So this is an edge dislocation. Since we have an extra half plane, this creates compression up here where it's shown in green, and then tension down here because there's uh, kind of an expanding of the, uh, the, the um, planes down here. So we have tension in the yellow area. And if we again think about a small solute, so substitutional, this creates a tensile strain here. And so if we think of that as um, the area where the extra half plane is, so this is our extra half plane here. And if we think about that small substitutional atom at the kind of the center of the edge dislocation here, what that does is that small impurity concentrates um, at the dislocation because it's basically trying to cancel out the compressive stress up here and the ten tension down here. So this creates a tensile strain. The edge dislocation creates a compressive strain. So by adding a small solute here, we uh, sort of negate some of this compression with this tensile strain that we have. So basically these uh, uh, small substitutional will be attracted to the compressive region of the edge dislocation to partially cancel out the dislocation compressive strain uh, with this impurity tensile strain. And so what this does is because now this has canceled out some of that strain by having this uh, impurity here, trying to move the dislocation away from the solute requires additional force and therefore it slows the mobility of the dis dislocation. And anytime you slow the dislocation uh, movement that increases the strength because you have to put more and more strength, uh, force or stress to overcome that mobility and to cause plastic deformation. So we're canceling out 
um, strain with this tensile strain from a small impurity. And you, you might imagine that we can do a similar with a large solute. So we have a large solute causes a compressive strain in the nearby uh, area. And so that will have a tendency to go to the tensile region of an edge dislocation, which is below the plane, to again, partially cancel out the tensile strain. And again, when we try to move this edge dislocation, um, it has to overcome that uh, reduction in energy. So it requires more force, more energy to move this edge dislocation. So again, moving the dislocation, the process of slip becomes more difficult with these solute atoms. And so we reduce mobility, increase strength uh, when we try to separate a dislocation from a solute. So increased energy requires a higher stress. And so we often think of this um, solute dislocation interaction as causing a drag on the slip process and therefore requiring higher stress to overcome. So let's look at the overall results of this then. So let's say we're looking at a copper nickel alloy. We have a solid solution as we talked about. So it's substitutional. And so if we think about it from the point of view of copper with adding some amount of nickel, we see that the tensile strength of copper initially, so 0% nickel, um, is close to 200 megapascals but then increases up to uh, over 400 megapascals, so doubles basically, um, when you add 50% nickel. And the same thing happens to the yield strength. Uh, it goes from uh, a little over 60 uh, when it's pure copper up to uh, close to 180 when we have 50% nickel. So the general kind of empirical relationship is that the yield strength um, is related to the concentration C to the one half, so square root of uh, one half, or the concentration. So alloying, forming a solid solution, increases the yield strength as well as the tensile strength. So that's why um, when we think of alloys as opposed to pure materials, we have stronger materials, stronger, you know, higher yield strength, higher tensile strength uh, by adding solutes to these materials.